Shalom, brothers and sisters. Exciting, prophetic news story that slipped through the cracks in the last few days that most people are not talking about, but you do see one or two that have actually picked up on it. And for me, it's exciting. Erdogan, the twit in Turkey, Russia, Iran and Syria must take measures against Israel after alleged Damascus strike. Which strike? Because they're striking Damascus all the time, so he should really just be more specific in my opinion. And Damascus is going to become a ruinous heap. It's a prophecy. It's in the Bible, Isaiah 17. It's there. It's going to happen very, very shortly. Every time they bomb Damascus or the surrounding areas around Damascus, we hold our breaths and we wait for something big to happen. And it's coming. It's at the door. Turkish president says Israel, the most concrete threat to regional global peace. After the airstrike targeted top Hezbollah official from unit tasked with delivering weapons from Iran. We will defend an urgent and permanent peace in Syria. Israel is the most concrete threat to regional and global peace, Erdogan said in an interview with Turkish media. The same Erdogan that's caused chaos in Syria and gone to war in Syria. But no, not him, not his people, not his bloody hands. No, that's just for Halloween. He says Israel is the problem to peace in Syria. It is essential, he says, that Russia, Iran and Syria take more effective measures against the situation which poses the greatest threat to Syria's territorial integrity, as if there is such a thing. Everyone's in Syria. Turkey's in Syria. Russia's in Syria. America's in Syria. Everyone's in Syria. But yeah, no, they're regional integrity, according to a readout of the interview from the Turkish presidency. So why am I smiling on this article? Because... Some key players are invited in here with Turkey. Turkey, Russia, Iran. <clears throat> He's talking about them by name. Now, if you go to Ezekiel 38, we know about the Gog Magog war that's coming. Ezekiel 38 and 39, definitely worth reading. That's something that's on the horizon when all these big nations come against Israel. Now, I've covered this in various videos over the last few years on this channel. But if you're new, I'm going to touch on them again. The Bible gives you biblical names. And if you take those biblical names historically and you add them to the map today, you get the nations that make up those names. And by doing that, you get a better geographical location in your mind of exactly who is coming against Israel. And there are three major players mentioned in this article and then the supporting characters in the scene. So Rosh, Russia, Magog, made up today of Kazakhstan, Uzbekistan, Turkmekistan, Kyrgyzstan, Tajikistan, and Afghanistan, all of them anti-Israel, Persia, which is Iran, Kush, which is Sudan and Ethiopia, Put, which is Libya, and then Meshech, Tubal, Bestogarma, and Gomer is Turkey. And you see Russia, Iran, and Turkey as your three big players in the Gog Magog alliance that's going to come against Israel. Now, the Bible also in those chapters tells you that there are those who will object to the attack on Israel in the Gog Magog war and say, hold up, this is not right. And they will be Sheba, Dedan, and Tarshish. Now, Tarshish, representative of European nations, believe it or not, Sheba and Dedan is modern day Saudi Arabia. Mohammed bin Salman. Now, Mohammed bin Salman and Saudi Arabia are willing to go into normalization agreements with Israel based on what's going to happen with the Palestinian two-state solution and all these things. But they are very much eager to go into that situation. And Mohammed bin Salman, the prince who is going to be ruling that entire area and is the de facto ruler at the moment. Very interesting guy. And I... <laughs> The timing permitting, I still need to release the video about him as a very good potential candidate for Antichrist. Um, he is going to object to this massive attack on Israel. And we can see that now where Iran has even threatened Saudi Arabia and those countries if they get involved or allow their airspace to be used by anyone trying to defend Israel. So you see that biblically also panning out and proving itself. And all these nations are friends today. And most of them, if not all of them, have got alliances and agreements in place. 
And now more than ever, Russia, Iran and Turkey are pushing for a stronger military alliance to stand against Israel and to bring about peace and stability in the region because Israel is the supposed threat. When it's actually there's too much of a hook in their jaw of the things that they can take as a win if they conquer or come against Israel together. And singularly on their own, they're too afraid to do it. But together they see their might in their forces and their weaponry as an overwhelming situation against a small country like Israel because they do not factor in the most important protection and ability that Israel has. And that is God. You can come with the most amazing weapons ever designed. You can come with alien weapons given to you by the Nephilim. You can come with things that can reshape galaxies. And I will still sit and laugh at you because God will be laughing at you in the heavens because you come against me with all these things. But you have come against the most high God who stands with these people. So you've already lost before you even set out. And this is what these enemies have not computed and will not compute until God comes down from heaven and <laughs> deals with them. One shot. Pray for Israel. God bless and shalom.